Dilly in the body snatcher right here. It's a champ. Big up the sports and icon. Subscribe. Otherwise, I might pay you guys a visit. Right, I hope you're all having a great day. So JD's one of three or four managers that John Taylor Wilder has, and of course he trains John Taylor Wilder as well, has said that by him, by John Taylor Wilder at least, rematching Luis Ortiz and Tyson Fury shows that he's fighting the best opponents out there. Which is ridiculous, absolutely insane thing to say when you've got Dillian White as the number one in the WBC. So he's not fighting the best, is he? He had plenty of opportunities to take on Anthony Joshua, but didn't want to fight Anthony Joshua because there was no date and venue when he accepted all the terms. No date and venue. We're not signing that, even though we knew it was the last week of October, first week of November. They couldn't do it at Wembley because the PBC Showtime didn't want it um, in September which was the only time that Wembley was available. But regardless of all that, he didn't sign to fight Anthony Joshua because no doubt in venue. Yet here we are, uh, five weeks after Wilder announced that he's going to be taking on Luis Ortiz next and still no date in venue. Two-faced much? I imagine so, right? Much like it was with when he took on Tyson Fury the first time. No date in venue for how many weeks? Two-faced much? Absolutely. So JD's saying that he's fighting the best is just ridiculous. Anyway, it's what JD's had to say, starting off with Deontay's performance over Dominic Brazil. Deontay looked great. He saw an opening and took advantage of it. We went back to basics in camp as far as eating, training, techniques, everything, and it showed. For the next fight, he's going to continue doing that and his fights will continue to be quick. When he does all the right things, he's on a whole different level. As far as Luis Ortiz is concerned, once we get a fight date, we will begin official camp two months before. Jonte is always active, so it comes to camp, he's already in shape. Jonte wants the biggest fights, so we are thrilled with what's happening. He's clearly fighting the best opponents of any heavyweight. Once these two fights are done, he's for Ortiz, then Fury, then Brazil, Ortiz again, and then Fury again. No one else can compare. Against Ortiz, he wants to show what he can do with a great camp and great health behind him. So that is JD's statement. Article in the description box. Um, which he goes on about the Ring Magazine and that as well. How he's unhappy that the Ring Magazine have put um, Tyson Fury ahead of Deontay Wilder in their rankings. All that kind of thing is what it is. So is Deontay Wilder taking on the best? Well, you can't say he is taking on the best when he avoided Anthony Joshua even for $100 million was the latest offer and he turned it down and he's unwilling to fight Dillian White. So anybody who's happy with a Luis Ortiz rematch, you need to have a real word with yourself, especially if you were criticizing Anthony Joshua for taking on Alexander Povetkin. Povetkin, former world champion, excellent resume. And he's younger than Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz has never been world champion. Luis Ortiz has a terrible resume. So, is he fighting the best? No. Does anybody want to see the rematch? No. Where is the rematch? When is the rematch? There's rumours that it could be September the 28th in New York at the Barclays. There's also rumours that it could be in Los Angeles as well. But either way, he announced it five weeks ago. Why have we heard anything? When it's such an issue that you can't sign for a fight within that, without date and venue, according to Wilder, which is why he turned down Anthony Joshua. Is what it is. And even then, in the first fight against Luis Ortiz, what happened? Well, Luis Ortiz was failing the medical one hour before the ring walk. He needed special permission and exemption on your head, be it, because Luis Ortiz needed the money. And look what he managed to do to him. So, is what it is. Yes, there were con controversial moments in that fight, of course, as well. We don't need to go over it again. But is it a rematch that anybody wants to see? No. Since that loss, Luis Ortiz has fought three guys and looked absolutely terrible. Certainly for the last two. At least anyway, he's looked absolutely terrible. So when JD says that Deontay Wilder would do it, um, another quick job on Luis Ortiz, much like he'd done with um, Dominic Brazil, you can believe it. Of course you can. Luis Ortiz is way, way past it. We all know that Luis Ortiz is being past it for quite some time. We know that Luis Ortiz is much older than what he actually, what, well, of what his record actually suggests. With his own mouth, he sat down with his father and watched Muhammad Ali versus George Foreman 
live on TV. So that should tell you in itself that he ain't 40 years old. He just isn't. Anyway, so as far as Tyson Fury goes, listen, I can understand a rematch. Sure. I think um, most people would probably agree that Tyson Fury won that fight and they gifted Deontay Wilder a draw. Now, people can say, and I've heard Wilder say it and other people say it, but to win a title, to win a championship, you have to rip it away from the champion. Wrong, wrong and wrong. This is a myth. It's not true. These are not the rules. The rules are, if you win more rounds than your opponent, then you win that belt. They, th this is the rules. If the rules have changed them along, um, um, along the lines where the champion gets a round or two head start, then they need to make it official. All right? Because right now, this is not the rules. Um, yes, Deontay Wilder, he did knock down Tyson Fury on two occasions. But again, everybody who says, well, you know what? Maybe the fight should have been a draw or maybe... Uh, listen, no. Okay, because again, you're counting them as 10-8 rounds. These were not 10-8 rounds. If you were to be honest with yourself, if you took out the fact, yes, okay, in hindsight, it's not reality, but if you took out the fact that Tyson Fury got dropped down in round nine and round 12, took them out, who won those rounds? Tyson Fury won those rounds. And if you can agree with that, then you have to put those rounds as a draw. Because when you get knocked down in a fight, it's not a two-point deduction automatically. It doesn't work that way. The official rules are one point deducted. So if you believe that without the knockdowns, that Tyson Fury won those two rounds, which he clearly did, then again, Deontay Wilder, that's two more rounds that he didn't win. Regardless, I can understand the rematch happening with them two. But again, as far as JD saying that he's fighting the best, how can you be fighting the best when you're not fighting the number one WBC ranked in Dillian White? Yet again, avoiding Dillian White. Forget the fact that, that he consistently ducked Anthony Joshua for a long, long time, even for $100 million he ducked him. Dillian White is more deserving than Tyson Fury and Luis Ortiz. Dillian White has a better resume than Tyson Fury and Luis Ortiz. He just does. Anyway, here's what it is. JD's, sorry, bruv, you are absolutely wrong on this one. He's not fighting the best. When you're rematching somebody that nobody wants to see, that is really old now, and it just looked terrible. It's ridiculous. Nobody wants to see Lewis Ortiz rematch. Nobody wants to see Lewis Ortiz rematch. If you do, then as in you would rather see that than Wilder take on Dillian White. I don't know what it is that you're watching. For me, quite clearly, you're okay with giving um, Deontay Wilder another pass to do whatever he wants, which is one of the reasons why I believe that the WBC will make him franchise champion. Because he, when you're franchise champion, you have no mandatories, which means Little Wilder doesn't have to go fight Dillian White. He doesn't have to do it. And the WBC will probably help him with that one by making him the franchise champion. That way he can go fight whoever he wants, right? Is what it is. And yet, yeah, Listen, for me, I think that the only way that uh, John Taylor Wilder can get any kind of credibility right now is by fighting Dillian White. That's my honest truth of it. Having a rematch with Lewis Ortiz that nobody wants to see is pointless. Having a rematch with Tyson Fury, again, ahead of Dillian White? No, listen, I'm interested in that rematch, of course. But Tyson Fury doing what he done to him at nowhere near match fitness. Imagine what, what he is going to do to Wilder when he is fit. Because we know that Wilder just cannot get any better. He's been doing the same thing for far too long. He can't get any better. Tyson Fury just needed that little bit of extra sharpness and not mess about. Is what it is, but anyway. That's my thoughts on it all. For me, I think that um, Deontay Wilder fighting the best is absolutely laughable. Listen, I have no issues if Wilder went and fought um, Dillian White and he fought Tyson Fury and then he fought Joshua or, and maybe a Kalnaki in there somewhere as well, then yes, we have to say Deontay Wilder is the best if he defeats them all. We have to say he's the best. But right now, anybody who's saying that he's the best is just living in cloud cuckoo land, in my opinion. But, but again, you saying that Wilder is the best, again, is still an opinion. A rematch against Luis Ortiz does nothing for him. Nothing whatsoever. It's a complete waste of a fight. He should be fighting Dillian White. Providing, of course, Dillian White gets past Oscar Ribas. No guarantees. 
But anything outside of Dillian White is yet another duck that Deontay Wilder will keep on doing. So JDs, we know what you're doing, okay? We ain't stupid. We know a lot of Wilder fans are stupid and they will believe what it is that you're saying because they don't know any better and you know it. It's like preaching to the moron. It's very, very easy. Anyway, drop your thoughts below. Article in the description box. As I said, drop thoughts below, click thumbs up, subscribe, catch you all on the next video.